Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 153 of Snackman. Uh, this week we're going to be talking to Nicole about the ever-elusive IPv6. Uh, really excited to get her insight on it and why we should be using it. So Nicole, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and then we'll dive right into it. Sure, well thank you. Um, well hello everybody, uh, my name is Nicole Weyer. And in Cisco, I'm the technical solution architect, but also known as the chief stroopwafel officer because I walk with these (laughs) yummy cookies and I give them out at Cisco Live and any sales meeting or where you bump into me. Um, Besides that, I am a massive advocate for IPv6. And uh, I love to tell you how to explain that IPv6 is like broccoli. Oh. Well, yeah, tell well, us a little I'm bit. I'm very that. interested to hear why IPv6 is like broccoli. <laughs> Everybody that's done a CCNA or is, is in networking or network engineering in general um, has dabbled and um, has to have a deep understanding of the characteristic of IPv4 and you know how to configure it, how to subnet from there. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you the characteristics of IPv6 versus 4 and or as you call it legacy uh, protocol and 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 because when we see the numbers like when I see the numbers on on my you know laptop or whatever I, I just completely like turn off I'm like I don't understand this so it would be helpful if we just kind of get an understanding there well the best thing is that uh, I know already by heart the the Cisco address space <laughs> because it's quite funny if you say, uh, I mean, if you know 420 and you know the meaning, so 2001 colon 420, Cisco. So uh, same like the legacy. On the moment you, you, you are busy with those IP addresses, then you get used to it. So although the address is bigger, um, it's just, just as easy. But as you say, so there are a couple of things, Kareem, which you said, which are very key. Uh, for you to, uh, which you mentioned, because indeed legacy protocol and IPv6, they are two different things because on the legacy, we have ARP and broadcast and we Uh don't have that anymore in IPv6, which is brilliant because that means that the zero and the last uh, triple Fs, you can use them because they, you don't have to make sure that they're in that space. So you don't do subnetting in IPv6 because you're using your prefix side of the house. So even address planning is made very easier and much cleaner than the legacy protocol. So as an example, let me show you quickly. So how the address family looks like. So the address family, you know, we have your multicast, unicast and anycast because IPv6 relies on multicast. And in order for to know who your neighbors are, because you need a, a form of ARP, it's something that's called solicited node multicast. So that's your, your core business of, let's say, the, the protocol uh, for moving uh, packets back and forth in order to know who your neighbor is, in order to know where your next router is, et cetera, et cetera. Those mechanisms you learn on the legacy protocol then apply also on IPv6. And then there's this little caveat or a little bit, well, and this is where people, uh, you know, start to freak out a little bit because in the IPv6 address family, you have more than one address on your interface uh, in order to do communication. And um, on the right, uh, on your screen, you will see link local, global, and unique local. And I put them on purpose in the two color green and one of the gray one. And I will explain a little bit as well why I did that. But any device that has a IPv6 interface enabled, so on your Mac, Apple, any operating system, but also on your router, on the moment when you turn on uh, IPv6 multi, uh, unicast routing, when you enable it, automatically a link local address is synthesized. There's a mechanism that's going uh, in the background, so you, no need for a computer to, you know, to, to ask for an IP address and all those things. So that's your link local. So you always have a link local, and that means that you can talk with anybody on the link. So right now, Kareem and Matt, the three of us, we are talking in this room. So we are talking on link local together. So if you have an IPv6 
we are talking, even if you have not have access to the internet for IPv6, so you're already communicating on IPv6 with me. Because there's also one other major importance here as well. IPv6 takes precedence over the legacy protocol. So it always tries first to do IPv6. And if it's working, then we continue on IPv6. And if it doesn't, it, do it falls back. And you don't notice it falls back because that mechanism uh, has been put in place in order to make that transition to IPv6 only as smooth as possible because we didn't want to interrupt the industry while they were deploying the legacy protocol in the 90s already and the early 2000s. So then if you want to go to the internet, you need to have a routable address and that's a global address. And this is where the address starts with 2000 and all the way up. And so you will have a global address and the, the RFC says you can have as much addresses on that interface as you like. Is that handy? No. But in general, what you will see, you would have two global addresses because that's for privacy reasons when you go towards the internet. So let me not really go very deep in unique local, but I do want to mention it because when I, in 2012, already explained you know, to the field and customers about, well, unique local is your 1918 address space type of IPv6 addressing, the most of the IT people would really get excited because they're like, oh, I have 1918 address space right now. So this is my plan for IPv6 as well, because I know how this works. It's not routable to the internet, all awesome. But there is a massive caveat in a dual stack environment. And let me first say dual stack means that you're running the legacy protocol and IPv6 together. Because those two things, by the way, without any transition mechanism, they don't know of each other because they talk two different languages. Um, but in the RFC, unique local doesn't take precedence over the legacy protocol. So you will not know if you are running IPv6 properly. Um, and so therefore, um, it's, it's definitely not recommended. And uh, just to go by using global addressing and just only route the addresses you need to go for the outside and let the rest in. So um, that's, that's sort of always what, what my suggestion is uh, towards the unique local address. Well, so I actually, um, I'm interested to uh, kind of get your opinion on um, what enterprises can do uh, to start to migrate and also what your experience has been in device support for IPv6. I know I, I ran into one IPv6 issue maybe five years ago, and it had to do with Amazon not supporting IPv6 in the VPC where we were running developer.cisco.com, actually. <laughs> um, and so those kinds of large scale issues, I'm guessing, are becoming less and less prevalent. Um, but I kind of want to understand are there still concerns that enterprise have? in that transition that is keeping that from adopting, or is it just a matter of now everyone's kind of stuck in this, um, in this mode of IPv4 and, and is just too lazy to get off of it? Um, so the, the, the cool part is though, you, 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 how do you say you saved yourself because initially you said migrating and then you went to transitioning, which is good okay. because I always, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, you know, focused on that because birds migrate. Um, and they, they come back yep. every year. Uh, and so we transition with IPv6 and we don't want to come back. Right. So, <laughs> truth. <laughs> so, uh, so that's one. So I'm also, so I'm in the transitioning phase. Um, so one of the things enterprises, so enterprises, they, they, um, depending on the use case, we have mandates. So in the U S there's this OMB mandate in federal, and they need to have uh, by end of uh, 2025, uh, an X amount of percentages of their devices running IPv6 only. In, and, and other countries have also very strong mandates to, to go with IPv6. Um, the, in the past, customers were scared uh, because, yes, how sh where should we start? What do you learn? And as you explained, Matt, uh, the developer.cisco.com, yes, in the past, uh, AWS did have challenges. They they fixed them because there are funky little things they you would 
bump into, which you don't run in with the legacy protocol. So it's a learning curve. And uh, enterprises are, there are some enterprises that, uh, that have acquired so many companies. And so they have so many 19, 18 overlapping spaces that it, it's painful in, in so many ways to continue on legacy protocol. Yet on IPv6, you know, you can easily uh, do this, well, the address planning. Um, and it's doable because can you just imagine that uh, a company like LinkedIn or Netflix, uh, HBO, their data centers are IPv6 only. So they, uh, they don't even have legacy protocol running in their data centers anymore. So I have, Nicole, I have a question and it might be, it might be a silly question. So if everybody's migrating, if everybody's transitioning, transitioning into, into IPv6, doesn't that free up a bunch of IPv4 or legacy? And what happens to that? So then I could throw the ball back again saying, um, so what did you do with freeing up IPX? And what did you do with uh, Apple Talk? Yeah, <laughs> just stopped using. <laughs> just stopped using that. Okay. <laughs> I was just trying to think if there's a, a an investment play here where I can capture some IP. Oh before. my god, <laughs> that'd be like buying up all the beepers, Curry. <laughs> Somebody has been listening, but keep in mind. So you know what? It might be. So there are a couple of things, by the way. So there. Uh, so I, I mean, uh, trust me, I I like your idea because it's it's a devil's advocate right. because technically you could sell, you could make money out of it. Um, AWS, by the way, now since February this year, charges you for a legacy IP per year. So $44 Whoa. per year per IP. Mm -hmm. And so this is also one of those reasons that people now offer something, oh, shoot, you know, I want to go IPv6. I got to pay for it. Yeah. Exactly. I have to pay for it. So to, to you know, to a little iterate, you know, by selling, you know, uh, IPv4 addresses, it sounds very, you know, interesting. Um, there were customers that um, s bought sl uh, tw slash 20, uh, 24 address space because they really wanted to have legacy addresses. Mm -hmm. What they did not know is the blocks they 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 bought. It took them they well they were busy for the last three years to clean them up because those legacy addresses have been so abused <laughs> they couldn't use them from day one. So uh, it's it's a very good time you know to start clean. Yeah, that sounds yeah. awesome. So um, you promised us at the beginning, Nicole, why um, IPv6 is like broccoli. Can you can you clue us into the answer? I mean, so it's very simple because IPv6 is internet broccoli. Mm. It's good for us in the long run, but you do not get an immediate <laughs> sugar rush by deploying it now. Nice comparison, actually. <clears throat> yep, yep, I agree with that. And now I want some broccoli <laughs> and to go for a run. <laughs> <laughs> On your new treadmill. Yeah, my uh, new trouble. Nicole, this has been awesome. Thank you for uh, coming on Snack Minute here. I know uh, you're a first time um, guest on our show, and I wanted to. We normally ask this question, um, and broccoli is not the answer, but if you were to <laughs> um, have a superpower, what would that be and, and why? You know, a superpower. I mean, oh my God. Um, I would think of, you know, mind reading. Okay. Oh. In order to quickly come to a point. Yeah. Okay. That's a new That's... one. I think I don't think we've had mind reading before. People are and too that scared to have that one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nicole, for joining us this week and starting an introduction into IPv6 and why we should really start to think about transitioning and not migrating uh, to it. Um, I think we should have you back and dig a deep a bit deeper into some of the technical bits. I think our audience would really like that. Snackers, catch us next week on another new episode of Snack Minute. And thank you very much for your time today. Nicole, thank you so much. Snackers, eat your broccoli. Thank you. <laughs>